That's it, Mac. That's all she wrote. Preseason is done. Over. Over. It's time for some real football. Hey. <laughs> I mean, not that that wasn't real football, because it was real football. Yeah. And I was glad to see it. Right. But now it counts. Yeah. Yeah. It's down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Now these games actually count for something. Yes. Now all these suspensions and injuries that have happened over the past four weeks oh, come man. to fruition. Yeah. Welcome back. Next episode, Fantasy Headliners. Uh, it's it's here. Week one is here. We've had uh, the Zeke appeal. Mm. We still, as of the time of recording, have not heard yeah. the outcome. Uh, hopefully that's soon. Um, I've heard that it could go down to four games. It's possible. It's possible. Mm-hmm. If you haven't drafted yet, does that change your draft strategy? Take mm-hmm. him a little bit earlier? Same as Le'Veon last year, end yeah. of the first round? I mean, he's a, he's a stud. I mean, you know, that he's one of those that you want to take a chance on. But, you know, again, like we said in time past, you know, you better make sure you get at least one of those RBs, mm-hmm. you know, his handcuffs. But Yep. Yep. D-Hop, mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford. Got paid. They're at home swimming. They're like Scrooge McDuck <sighs> swimming through their piles of cash. Man. Stafford now the highest played NFL player of all time. I don't know if it's warranted or if it's earned, mm. but that's the society we live in. It's like every time somebody gets paid, yeah, they're the new highest person. Yeah, like they're Crazy. trying to top each other. Or yeah, great. And you think about it. I think Aaron Rodgers is coming up here pretty soon. What would he get? Oh my gosh! If Stafford well, is getting a bajillion and twelve dollars, yeah, what is Aaron Rodgers getting? He should get. He should get two billion if he keeps his mustache. Is that a big? Oh, the mustache. <laughs> yeah, the mustache is like whoa. That is awesome. That dog. is epic. Oh my gosh. I, you know what? I don't. I don't mind it. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't throw touchdowns, the thing needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. it throws off his like center of gravity, because that thing is like majestic and huge. Yeah. If that throws off the balance of weight at all, yeah, it's got to go. Yeah, yeah, it's got to go. <laughs> you, your team made a move here recently. Mm-hmm. Joe Hayden. Yeah, I like it. Out of nowhere, <laughs> just gets dropped by the Browns and picked up by the Steelers in the same day. Twenty minutes. Yeah, if that. Yeah. I mean, just long enough to drive to his his agents. Office to, to sign new <laughs> to papers. Sign the check. Crazy. You know, that's a, that's a, I think that's a huge game for Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, I Their agree. Their defense was already on the up and up. Yeah, yeah. I think Hayden kind of got to the point in, in Cleveland where he cared, mm-hmm. but he knew that it wasn't going to matter. No, no. They you know, so now he's going to go to a contender. Yeah, I mean, it's going to bolster that defense a lot, you know, and give those linebackers a chance to really – do that thing, mm-hmm. not have to fall back a lot in coverage. I mean, you don't really you don't even have to worry about that side of the field, man. Yep. You know, yep. Hayden's a real good corner. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the week one matchups. Now that the real football is here, we can start breaking down yeah. actual lineups, actual games, uh, what to look for, what to watch out for. Uh, yeah, we'll just go through all the games, give you guys as much, uh, you know, key pieces that we can get. Yeah. We're just looking for the, you know, the breadcrumbs right now. Oh, yeah. As we get later and closer to the game time, we're going to start feeding you a little bit more. Yeah. We, These we, are the breadcrumbs. We, we, we're going to give you a little bit at a time here. Now, you know, Thursday night, uh, the first game is going to be the Chiefs and the Pats. I hate Thursday games. Man. Well, they're better than the uh, England games. Uh, okay. You know. Yeah, because that's like way early in the morning on a Sunday. Exactly. And I, if I want to sleep in a little I can't. Yeah. No disrespect to the... What do you say? Englanders? <laughs> <laughs> that's not it, but I like it. We'll go, right. We'll, we'll go, go with, with that. That's not it, but we'll go with the you know, Eng- Englanders. You, you guys over there, you know, we have no issue with y'all, but it's just a time. But, yeah, man, this game here, um, some of the ones that I'm looking at that, you know, probably will be beneficial to play for the Chiefs, um, of course, Hunt. You know, Spencer Ware, that old injury. Mm-hmm. You know, if you guys haven't drafted him, I would suggest getting him pretty early. Fourth round? Uh, mm, Too late. It depends. I guess I, it depends on your draft. Yeah, it depends on your draft and who you're drafting with. If you got some aggressive uh, drafters, leaguers, mm-hmm. you might want to get him in the third round. Right. You know, but. Um, and something everybody's got to watch out for. Mm-hmm. I don't want to throw any, you know, dirt on Kareem Hunt. Right. But. Andy Reid is notorious for using multiple backs no matter who he has. Yes. I mean, there's times when Jamal Charles was getting 10, 12 carries a game mm-hmm. when he was healthy. Yeah. So I wouldn't expect Hunt to come out and get 20 carries a game. Chuck no. Hendrick West is probably still going to be involved. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to be in play. But the the two that I'm really, you know, excited about on that offense is um, Hill and Kelsey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you got those guys, 
you know, stardom. And again, you know, Pat, the Pats, you know, their front is pretty formidable. Mm -hmm. So even if, you know, those guys, those backs split, they're not going to do a lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the Pats are going to go off. I'm not a Patriots fan, though. But they're going to go off. (sighs) This year is going to be ugly, man. Uh, Ugly as in good for the Pats. Good for the Pats. Good for anybody who's got a piece of that offense. You see the interview with Gronk earlier? They interviewed him, and they actually got him to say on on an interview, recorded interview, that he was going for 1,100 yards and 17 touchdowns. Really? Yeah. Well, see, that was a whole thing in my strategy but um, in wanting to draft him, which somebody sniped sniped him before I could get him, but – he he'd signed the uh, uh, an extension mm-hmm. early in the year, and that was one of the things that they said that he had to, to at least get. I think it was eighty receptions, like a thousand yards, and at least eight touchdowns mm. in order to get ten million dollar bonus. So I'd take ten mil. Hey dog, I took a meal right about now. I ain't even hating. I'll take like a hundred grand. Yeah, I take a M E A L right now. I'm a little hungry, man. <laughs> I'm a little hungry, but anyway, <laughs> time to eat. It's time to eat. Um, <laughs> but as far as uh, the Pats, man, now I picked this guy up. And, you know, I got a little flack for it. You know what I mean? Um, but here's the thing: Chris Hogan, he's a big deal. He could be. Yes, he could be. A lot of people talk about Amendola. You know, don't get me wrong. I think he's um he's a good talent. But Hogan, you know what his nickname is, right? I'm afraid to ask. Seven Eleven, because he's always, always open. open. <laughs> That's it, baby. So if you guys are drafting this week, I, I would pay attention to Chris Hogan. You could probably get him. Well, I don't know. His ADP is kind of risen now, but um, you know, just just look at him, man. Because uh, Brady, him and Brady have a good rapport. Um, you know, in training camp and everything, they they really hooked up on a lot of you know nice passes mm-hmm. and everything. So so for me, of course, if you got Grunt Brady. I said Hogan, and I'd say uh, I think White. I think White's the only running back that I would ever play in any league. Yeah. Because he's the only one that I know is going to be involved. Yes. Everybody else is going to be a crapshoot. Exactly. Everybody's talking about Gillisley, Rex Burkhead. I mean, but White's proven. You know, he's, he's shown what he could do. Yeah. So, yeah. out of those guys, man, that's what I'm looking at. Agreed. Um, Who we got next? We got the Jets and the Bills. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Jets, you know, uh, I like that. That's all I got about that. Exactly. This game is going to be ugly. It's going to be pretty ugly because the Bills look like they, they're they just like packing things up, mm-hmm. waiting for next year. Yeah, already. I mean, even preseason, they've packed it up. Yeah. And the Jets have been packing it up for a while. Yeah, since uh, 1985. Yeah, you know? I mean, they've, they've, been, they've had the moving van out front for a long time. <laughs> and, and really out of the offense, man, um, you know, Robbie Anderson, you know, Bilal, and uh, I, people are going to look at me crazy, but also it's Ferry and Jenkins. That's like way deep. It's deep. Now you're talking like 16 team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, he, maybe even more. <laughs> well, he, you know, he's a stab in the dark. Uh, but again, we're talking about the Jets. I mean, mm-hmm. that those are the only three. We had to put somebody on this list. Yeah, yeah, Just because yeah. you had to have a name. Exactly. You know, and everybody's kind of like, oh, if we just name all the Jets, mm-hmm. one of them's bound yeah. to do something. I mean, I'd rather say Joe Namath, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but he could probably do better than some of these I, guys. I agree. They are in, <laughs> they are in shambles. You know, the, and the Bills are not really that much better, to be honest with you. Uh, other than Shady, uh, maybe Zay Jones. Mm-hmm. That's, those are the ones that I'm going to touch in that game. Yep. All right. Probably then, all year. Yeah, it hey, really. I mean, and Shady, you know, it's been some trade talks out there. So just keep you guys ears peeled to our channel and yep. we'll let you know what's up. Yep. Uh, next one, we got Jags and the Texans. Man, this is, this is another ugly <sighs> one. Yeah. You got one team – Going into the dumpster, not even knowing who their quarterback, mm. and then you got the Texans, who's going through everything they're going through right now. Right, right. You know, with with all the storms in Houston and all their pride for their city. Yeah, this could get out of hand really quick. Yes. Right now, the game's scheduled to be played in Houston. Mm. Whether that actually happens or not, yeah, uh, it may end up being moved. Don't know yet, but if it is in Houston, man, this is going to be off the charts. Do you remember the first game? I remember watching Saints, it on TV. The Saints, was, the yeah. first game after oh, Katrina, man. they went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could see the same thing happening here. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I was going to allude to that. If you have J.J. Watt, 
anybody really on that <laughs> that front four, um, I pick them up, or even their defense. So if you if you're drafting, and I'm typically don't. And you're advise, talking about for leagues that have IDP. IDP, mm-hmm. yeah. Excuse me. But if if and, and if you also have a uh, for DSTs out there, if you, <laughs> if you don't play an IDP league, don't pick up Jay Juwan. Don't do it. <laughs> he can't play receiver. Yeah, exactly. Well, he may be able to, but <laughs> oh, he, he'd be an awesome tight end. I wouldn't tackle him. No, no. But um, yeah, definitely. If you can get a defense man, like I said, I typically don't like to get them. Uh, you know, like in the early round. And when I say early, I'm talking about like round ten, something like that. I, I would maybe think about doing that if you if you're drafting this week. And here's one of the things is you'll get. I'm gonna we're both gonna get a lot of crap for this. Yeah, everybody who watches because <laughs> everybody's like, oh, the last two rounds, defense and kicker. Mm-hmm. To me, kicker, yes, right, whatever. Defense, I'll take a defense early. Yeah, yeah, I will take it. Not crazy early. Right. If there's still players on the board that I can use, mm-hmm. I'll keep passing. Yeah, but twelve, thirteen mm-hmm. round area. Yeah. I'll take a good defense. Yeah. This is something you can use all year long. That's you know true. they're going to be solid. And I've had a few games in the past where it came down to my defense winning it for me. Oh, yeah. So it, yeah. don't it always adopt that strategy. Kind of just play around with it and see what you got. If all the players available are nobody you're interested in, yeah. pick them up. But especially like like you were saying, man, this this uh, game in particular, the narrative is just it's, it's laid out. Mm-hmm. I think the Texans are going to go off. Um, the Jags uh, – I wouldn't play Fournette. I know he's that shiny new toy. Uh, but, again, just like we were saying, Texas is going to go off. Fournette's not going to do nothing. No. And I, I have a feeling a lot of the people that – because, I mean, I have Fournette as my sit of the week mm-hmm. for running back. Uh, a lot of people who drafted Fournette took him early enough to know that yeah. they probably got to start him. They probably have to. Yeah, well. they probably. But if you have another option on the bench, yeah. if you have a C.J. Anderson – uh, and Amir Abdullah, even who's got a tough matchup in Arizona, right? I would much rather roll the dice on one of those guys, yes, than go with Fournette yeah. this week. I yeah. mean, to go play against Houston in Houston, yes. coming off the ankle injury with a quarterback they don't even know who it is yet. Exactly. I mean, this is just this could turn bad quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but yeah. um now the next game is intriguing to me, and, and it's actually one of my favorites. Being a Steeler fan, uh, Steelers and Browns, um, man, all play every Steeler that you can play. <laughs> I mean, you know, I say the killer bees, but he, you know, uh, Ben, uh, Bell, Brown, Bobby Brown, if you got him, yeah. I mean, anybody know, who's there, exactly. Martavis. yeah. It's gonna be uh, ugly, mm-hmm. you know, especially now that. You know, Hayden switch sides. You never know. I mean, the narrative might be there for him to, mm-hmm. you know, hit him a little bit. It could be. And, I mean, I'm not going to say Joe Hayden made the difference. Mm-hmm. When I first saw this game on paper, the first thing that kind of hit me is, mm, yeah, it's going to kind of be a trap game. Yeah. You know, not that I want to call the Browns beating the Steelers because I don't think it's going to happen. But mm-hmm. And I don't think Joe Hayden is the difference maker. Right. But I think that kind of deflated some of the sales of some of the people. Yeah. I mean, he was their top corner, and they just – they released him, and he was signed. Quickly. Eight minutes later. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, the only person I'd watch out for in that game is Big Ben. Right. And that's only because I can see them being up so big after three quarters that he sits. Yeah. And maybe he's gotten enough points by then. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, if he throws for about five touchdowns in the first half, it's possible. It's possible. You know. I and mean, it could be a heavy running day. True. You know what I mean? True. Le'Veon, which he should play. Yeah. Which it sounds like he will play. Could yeah. have ridiculous numbers. James Conner could have ridiculous numbers. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, but on the Brown side of it, for me personally, uh, the only two would probably be Cor- uh, Corey Coleman and Isaiah Crowell. And, again, just like you stated, um, I wouldn't put a lot of emphasis on, on Isaiah Simply being because they're going to be down, mm-hmm. and they're not going to run the ball as much, especially in the second half. Yeah, one person I think about too. If we named somebody like Fournette, mm-hmm. maybe you got Duke Johnson. Yeah, Duke Johnson is not a bad play this week, especially in PPR. Especially in PPR because yeah. he, he's going to spend a lot of time, maybe not getting a lot of carries, but he's going to be mm-hmm. he's going to be getting those short dump off passes. He'll get a few carries here and there. Yeah, Duke Johnson is somebody who's going to be sneaky all year long. Oh yeah, he's not going to be that sexy guy, but he's going to be able to score. Mm-hmm. Score, score some points. I think I think the uh, 
the league in general wants to adapt that style of um, weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, when David Johnson came out, yep. Le'Veon, so on and so forth, they want that hybrid type of mm -hmm. back. So you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of teams, you know, try to develop that. Great. All right. So uh, next we got uh, the Cards and Lions. If you're a betting man, whatever the over under ends up on this game, you bet the over. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling this could turn into a shootout. It's going to get ugly quick. It could. I mean, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of points scored. And heck, yeah. so maybe I'm, completely wrong. Well, <laughs> that would be a 9 6 game. But you never know. I'm, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is going to be a high scoring game. Yeah. Both, well, both teams are going to be looking to air it out a lot quickly. Uh, but they also got Abdullah mm -hmm. and David. I think David's going to have, obviously. A lot better day than Abdullah will yeah. against the front of, of Arizona. Mm -hmm. But Abdullah, I mean, they got him lining up in the slot. They got him, yeah. you know, doing all different types of stuff. He's still a decent play. Man, Abdullah's a sneaky play. He's uh, he's one of my sleepers for the year, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, if he stays healthy, man. Because they, they, they're talking about giving him 200, you know, plus. And carries. every time he's been on the field, he's produced. Yeah, yeah. His biggest thing is he hasn't been on the field. Mm -hmm. If he's on the field, he is... He's fringe, you know, top 15 running back. Right. I agree. Um, Palmer, Smoke, Fitz, and, of course, DJ mm -hmm. from the cards, you know. Uh, look at those guys. And then Stafford, Golden Tate, I think, will be big. Uh, Galladay, somebody I really, really like. Um, it might take him a few games. It just depends on the game flow. Mm -hmm. But if you have him, just uh, keep him stashed away. Yeah, I like I like Harson Palmer in this game. Yeah, man. If you got somebody who's you're, you're starting, Philip Rivers, mm -hmm. I'm going Carson over Philip Rivers. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get I, to have, that. Yeah, I know because that's going to be a little bit later on. Yeah, because we were talking off camera, but yeah, Carson has a, a potential for a huge week. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, in the next next game here, um, I think it's starting to get into the the fourish four o'clock games. Uh, oh, yeah, we got uh, the Bucks, Tampa Bay, and the, and the Finns. I like this one. Uh, that's going to be an exciting game. This one's uh, got a lot of a lot of fantasy people in it. it yes. A lot of fantasy players going to be in this game. And you really – it's a lot that you can play. The three that really stand out for me for the Bucks is, of course, uh, Jameis, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Evans, and believe it or not, Cameron Brake. Yep, I, uh, I'll, I'll go with Brake. I like Brake because I think the Dolphins, you know, their, their defense is pretty tight, you know. Uh, but Brake, he's going to have that – middle of the field just wide open especially with djax on one side and evans on the other so uh the dolphins are going to be running around pretty busy defensively you know mm -hmm. so i think james is going to air it out i think oh. they got something to prove too because they struggled in the preseason yeah they yeah. struggled and I'm, i think part of that's kind of on purpose they don't want to show everybody everything right but that offense could be <laughs> scary Man. At top five, I think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hit, hit me up with the Dolphins. I got my sound effect ready when you get to the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I got my boy coming up in the next one here. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with, uh, first off, Devontae Parker. Everybody's been talking I don't about. have a sound effect for him. You got to okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll But back. no, I agree. Devontae Parker's yeah. just came out today that Jarvis Landry's under investigation. Yeah. Mm. I mean, w w will somebody grab these guys by the neck and just tell them to behave? Yeah. You're making millions Stop getting in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it sounds easy. I mean, I'm sure it's not because I'm sure there's temptation with yeah. everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. Not so much for domestic abuse, but yeah, yeah. That's, get get your stuff together. Yeah, exactly. You are that's, blessed beyond belief, and you start acting like it. Right to play a sport that we all love, you know. But yes, I do like Devonte Parker. Yeah, Devonte is a big one. Uh, Kenny Stills. No, nothing for him. Um, Jay Ajayi. There we go. J Train, baby. <laughs> We hopping on the J train this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, this could be a huge game for him. Um, I really think they're gonna feed him and keep feeding him, uh, the ball. And Thomas, I mean, I think he's gonna. Mm -hmm. Julius Thomas yeah. could be sneaky. We talked he's... about him in the past with Cutler. Yeah, uh, hooking up with his tight end back when in the Chicago days. Exactly. Same thing could happen. Thomas could get a lot of touchdowns this year. He's, he's sneaky, man. He he could uh, if if you know if he's not owned. You probably could pick him up, you know, off the waivers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, next game is the Falcons and the Bears. Mm. You know, you got the usual suspects. Julio. Julio. I am uh, calling Julio. Yeah. I think he's going to be big. Um, and to be honest, I like Freeman and Coleman this 
uh, for this game. You can play Coleman as a flex. Mm-hmm. I think he's uh has a standalone value. And of course Ryan, I think he's gonna be big. Yep. Uh for the Bears. Nobody. Nobody. I mean uh, let's be real. If you got Jordan Howard, you're probably gonna start him. Because yeah, you drafted him in the first, second round. Yeah. You're gonna but, be disappointed. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. You're gonna be down early and they're not gonna be looking to run the ball. Nah. Nah. Don't expect a huge day from Jordan <laughs> Howard. No. Watch, now, the, watch the dude rush for 150 and three touchdowns. Oh, right. <laughs> but no, no, no. Tyreek Cohen now. Tariq Cohen. Tariq. Yeah, the, the human, human joystick. The human joystick. He, he by, tiny. He's small. He's like my nine-year-old running around out there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm watching the game on TV, and, and mm. I lose sight of him, and I'm watching it from yeah. however far away. I can't imagine being on the, looking over the line for him. Man. Like, he's around here somewhere. It was some clips, I think it was Instagram or YouTube or something, where they were showing some of his uh, training, and he was actually doing, like, back flips and catching mm-hmm. passes. Crazy. Crazy. So, okay, let's move on to an, uh, another game that I think is really interesting, the Raiders and Titans. Mm. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, and uh, you'd be surprised. I didn't I didn't even put Lynch down as a start. Again, people are gonna start. Mm-hmm. It was I was this close to putting Lynch mm-hmm. as a sit for the week. Yeah, um, I think Fournette kind of fits into that more for me. Uh, but Lynch is close. I don't I'll like I don't like Marsh on this. Not thing. this not not this game. Not this game. Um, no. I think he's gonna have his moments. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Marshawn personally and everything like that. But you know, people are gonna be kind of disappointed mm-hmm. the ones that drafted him very early. But in this game, in he's more of a flex this week. Yeah, yeah. If you need him at flex, if, yeah, he, you're gonna get flex. You know, mm-hmm. payout. You're not gonna get RB two. Nah, nah. Not unless for some reason they end up getting the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, they have a couple goal line carries. Yeah, he yeah. I, I can see him getting 40, 50 yards, but he could get two touchdowns. Yeah, depending on you know game flow. Yeah, but again, like I said, the Titans they got a heck of a defense, mm-hmm. man. So it, it's gonna be kind of hard to run on them. Now, Amari Cooper, I really like in this game. Him and Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. So I got and Cook. To be honest, he's <laughs> he's Is not that, a sexy name. Well, here's the thing about Jerry Cook. Every team he goes to, mm-hmm. everybody's like, "Oh, we got Jared Cook." Yeah, yeah. And then they always end up leaving, like, "Oh, you almost had it." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he just yeah. never right, does right. anything. There's so much hype every year, mm-hmm. and it's because he's a big body, athletic, mm-hmm. quick. It's just everywhere he goes, he just yeah. disappears. But again, I think it kind of goes back to what you were saying about the you know the red zone looks. Um, he's just he's an added weapon. Crabtree, I don't think. I think he's more of on the on the decline this year, so they're gonna need to compensate for those red zone looks that he, you know, gave mm-hmm. the team last year. And I think Cook could be one of those guys. Another guy, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you haven't talked about the Titans yet, right? Not yet. No. All right, bring up the Titans because I got one for them. Uh, well, basically, I got both RBs. Yeah, uh, it's same situation like with the Falcons. I think that Derrick Henry has his standalone mm-hmm. value. So if you have him on your bench, you know, along you know with Murray. Um, I play him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think this is one of those games where they're gonna they're gonna cycle those guys in because they want to keep them fresh. Because the team has got so much expectation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're they're not gonna uh, run Demarco into the ground. So I play both of them and uh, Matthews. I really like him. Rashard Matthews gonna surprise some people. He yeah. always surprises people. Yeah. Every team he goes to, he surprises. Yeah. Um, I'm excited that Corey Davis. Mm-hmm. Has a chance to play. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't expect too much week one because right. he hasn't really practiced for three weeks. That's something you got to watch. Mm-hmm. Everybody was so high on Corey Davis. Mm-hmm. Then he gets hurt and everybody's like, who? Right, right, right. The dude is a top talent. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's no reason why by week three, four, five, mm-hmm. he's the solid number one in, in, yeah. in Tennessee. Yeah. You got to watch for Delaney Walker this week. No, that's a good one. The Oakland that's Raiders are the worst ranked defense mm-hmm. against tight ends. Right. I think there was some crazy stat last year where they were, they allowed a tight end touchdown for like eight, nine weeks in a row. Mm. This is going to be Delaney Walker's day. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to say, dang, I should have drafted Delaney Walker. Yeah. And then next week, maybe not. Right, right, right. But I, I think he's going to have a good day. If you got Delaney Walker yeah. as your tight end or as a bench tight end, mm-hmm. start him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, okay, next we got the Ravens and the Bengals. 
Um, not a lot on the Ravens side of it uh, for me, other than Mike Wallace. I think Mike, um, he's he's always been consistent, you know, since he's been with the Ravens. So especially if Flacco does play. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's still kind of up in the air. Hopefully, he'll he'll play for some of you guys that have any Ravens on your on you know on your roster. Mm-hmm. Now the Bengals, this is another this is one of those situations, uh, especially with the running backs. Yep. But I think he's going to be. Well, see now, for me personally, I think I would start if you got Hill. I would start him. Uh, now, if you got both Hill and Mixon, it could be another one of those situations where you could put Mixon as the flex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think Geo is going to be mixed in too much. You know, from what we've seen in preseason, he hadn't had a lot of uh, work. You know, with the number one, so I think they're trying to work him in slow. You know, with his injury, AJ all day. You mm-hmm. know this this guy, man, he's a stud. You know, I don't care what the matchup is. You got somebody like him, Brown, Julio, uh, Odell. These are like matchup proof. Yeah, they're matchup proof. You know what I mean? Regardless. Exactly. So those are the main three for me. Yep. Um, No arguments there. Me personally, I'm not starting any Bengals running back. Right. Until I know. Right, right, right. After week one, week two, and I start seeing how it's going to flow, then I will. If you got one of them, hopefully you have a better option. Yeah. All right, next we got the Eagles and the, and the Skins. Now, I'm, I'm really intrigued with this one uh, because I got my man Terrell Pryor sitting out there. Is Dude, the hype real? Uh, yeah, for me it is. We'll find out. I'm telling you. <laughs> we'll now, find out in a week. We're going to timestamp this, and I'm going on record to say, to me, this dude is the second coming of Julio. And it's And the reason, reason why I say that, if you look at all the metrics and everything like that, I mean – they're pretty much the same size, mm-hmm. speed, and all that. I mean, they run, you know, the same 40, everything. This guy, he had a 1,000 yards last year. On with, the Browns. On the Browns. And that was his first year. <laughs> and he played safety. You know what I mean? And I think they won their one game where he played quarterback, game, running back, but, receiver, and safety. Man, he did in it one all. game. I mean, hell, I think he went up and uh, was in the concession stands. Yeah, I, mean, I saw him selling Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I'm telling you, dog. Yeah. So – to me, prior is, and this is something that um, Cousins has never had. He's never had a big uh, wide receiver, mm-hmm. you know. So he's got a big target. These guys uh, showing a good rapport. So I really like Terrell Pryor. Mm-hmm. Um, Fat Rob, I like Fat Rob. I think he's going to be. Um, it's his job to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, I was high on Samaj. Uh, I mean, I still kind of got him out there, you know, looking at him, but. As long as Fat Rob is doing his thing, it's his job to really mm-hmm. lose. And Reed, of course, I think Reed's going to be. A- if you got Reed, you got to play him because you don't know how many games you're going to have him. <laughs> yeah, you better <laughs> play him while you got him. Yeah, him and Grunk kind of in the yeah. same category. As far as the Eagles, uh, Wentz, Jeffries, and Ertz, those three, mm-hmm. I don't have no problems with. No. So I'll play those guys. Yep, right. Not a big blunt day. I don't no, think. no, I, I wouldn't even play him. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we got Colts and the Rams. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of ugly. Is this the matchup of Scott Tolzien <laughs> and Jared Goff? Whoa. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> this should be Monday Night Football right here. Yeah. Uh-oh. This is like something you watched the last week of the season when everybody's sitting their starters. Yeah. Not yeah. week one. Week one, baby. Oh, man, my boy Jared Goff. Hey. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm, you know, I've been high on the Rams anyway. Um, I know you got your questions about them, but I, I actually, like the Rams. I don't like Jared Goff. I'm, that last game that he mm-hmm. played in in preseason three, it looked like he totally forgot yeah. like how to tie his shoes, yeah. how yeah. to read a book, right? I mean, how to much less catch a football and throw it somewhere. I mean, he was lost. But see, and, and, look and, at this picture, <laughs> right, right, and that's true. But I mean, again, you know, it goes back to you know my main argument. There's a reason why they you know traded up for this guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's and I know we haven't seen. There's a, there's a reason that Fisher traded up this guy. Well, right, right. <laughs> and he's right. no longer there. Well, true. But with McVeigh, I mean, his offensive mind, I like it, you know, and I think he's going to. Uh, he's he's going to turn him into Cousins? Hey, that's not bad. I mean, <laughs> what's wrong with Cousins? You have a better shot at hitting the lottery. Well, probably. <laughs> but anyway. Um, it's not even raining outside, and you could get struck by lightning quicker than Jared Goff taking off. America, don't America. don't pay no attention to that. America, but you know, like I said, uh, if you got Gurley, Watkins, and Cooper Cup, 
play those guys. I man. like Cooper Cup. Yeah, man. He and, and and to be honest with you, to me, he's more intriguing in his matchup, especially like the first few games, because he's kind of like a safety net. Mm-hmm. And Everett, that tight yep. end, that big tight end, man, he's he's pretty cool. Yep. Um, the Colts, if you got Frank Gore playing, just for pure volume. If you don't, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. I feel bad for T.Y. Yeah. If, T- if luck don't come back, you might as well just trade T.Y. while you can. You if better. you can get anything for T.Y. Hilton right now, anything. Right. A bag of sand, a couple marbles. Now latest. A Rubik's Cube. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you can get for T.Y. Hilton, yeah. I would start thinking about it because once the news comes out that Andrew Luck ain't coming back for a while, which yeah. to me, mm-hmm. there's not even a timetable yet. Mm-mm. And even if there was a timetable, you see he's got a – work out again and get back into yeah, game shape. Exactly. I mean, he hasn't done anything. Yeah. I mean, you're looking six, eight, ten weeks. I don't – I mean, I love T.Y. Hilton. Right, I right. love T.Y. Hilton. Oh, yeah. I don't love T.Y. Hilton without Andrew Luck. No. Well, and to your point, I mean, if the T.Y. Hilton owner is out there, like you said, I would probably trade him. If you like, can. And now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because once <laughs> – if you wait two, three weeks into the season – and people are like, mm. you know what I mean? They mm-hmm. start to see that he's not getting targets, not getting looks. You know, it's a chance you take, yep. but sell high. Yep. All right, uh, next game we're going to go with the hometown Panthers and the 49ers. Um, I like Kelvin Benjamin, Funches, and – Honey Funches of Oats. Honey Funches of Oats, and my boy Jonathan Stewart. I like those three in this game. But everybody, everybody's high on McCaffrey. Well, see, me personally with the thing with McCaffrey, I mean, he's – Great mm-hmm. in PPR. And if, you, if you're if you in a PPR league, I play him as a flex. Um, but standard half point, he's going to get you there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's kind of like the dad who takes you know to the prom. He's going to get you. <laughs> he's going to get you to the prom, but it's up to you to, <laughs> to finish it. To finish. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, I have but no hey, idea. let's it's roll with it. Strangest analogy ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thought bubble. <laughs> right there. Yeah. But um now as far as the 49ers are concerned, Hyde maybe. And it really depends on the Carolina defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been looking improved this year. As of right now, today, I think me, there's only two people I'm starting on mm-hmm. 49ers. Yeah. That's Hyde and Pierre Garcon. Yeah, that's yeah, I agree. Pierre Garcon, I think, is gonna have yeah. a monster PPR year. I'm, yeah. I'm, he's, I would not be surprised if he leads the league in receptions this right. year. Yeah. Uh, and a PPR, perfect. That's possible. Would you trade T.Y. Hilton for Pierre Garcon and something else small? I mean, yeah. I, obviously you can't do him straight up. Right. I, you could get more for T.Y., I, I would hope. You would hope. Well, but again, it just, <laughs> it like, depends how knowledgeable your league mates are. Yeah. But, yeah. but Pierre, somebody I'd go mm-hmm. trying to target. Pair him up with somebody else, another low end RB three, mm-hmm. RB two, low end RB two. Yeah, pair him with Pierre, and you may be able to get it for Ty. And you know, speaking of the Forty ers I mean, if you got if you're a hide owner, you probably need to get Joe Joe mm-hmm. Williams because uh, Carlos can't stay healthy for nothing. So mm-hmm. that's just a little side note. Mm-hmm. But um, the next game we got Seahawks and the, and the Packers. Oh man, that's gonna. I think that'll be an interesting game. But uh, I like Russell Baldwin and, and uh, Jimmy Graham. Mm-hmm. I really like those guys in this game. Running backs, is, it's just so muddled, man. Um, I'm not even messing with that right nope. now. Nope. I had Thomas Rawls for probably like two hours, and I dropped him. I don't even know if he it, – it might have yeah. – the, the transaction like posted, and then he was gone. And then he was gone again. <laughs> He's, he was like, poof. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But those three, if you got those guys, I think they're going to uh, have a good showing. On the Packers side of it, man, you got Aaron Rodgers I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the Black Unicorn this week. I, I really like him because I don't like, you know, Seahawks, you know, these guys are real good, especially those corners. So, Martellus, if they get down there, man, he's going to punch it in. Yeah. And my boy, you know, Ty, I really like Ty Montgomery. PPR wise, mm-hmm. especially this week. Well, let me get into my sit of the week for tight end. It's Martellus Bennett. Oh wow! <laughs> and, and those those deep, those linebackers are so athletic for Seattle. They're yeah. so you got Wagner and Wright. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are capable of taking down a tight end. And until I see Aaron target his tight end more, mm-hmm. 
It worries me. I mean, I like him for the year, but this mm-hmm. game? Right, right. I'm not too high on Martellus Bennett. I can't be too high on anybody against Seattle. Well, right, right. That's yeah. just, you know, you need to temper expectations when your teams play Seattle and Denver and Houston. Yeah. I just, it worries me. If you have a second tight end, I'd rather start Cam and Brait this year, or this week, than Martellus Bennett. Well, oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's, yeah. you know, Brait's a lower ranked tight end. Mm-hmm. I'd rather go, you know, yeah. that route. Yeah, his matchup is, is you know, far better. Yeah. I would agree. Um, but now, they can take my advice. They can take yours. Either way. Hey. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, we got the Giants and the Cowboys. Um, well, and I think it just depends on if uh, Odell Beckham is going to play. Yeah. So as of right this second, mm-hmm. it sounds like he might. He yeah. practiced. Yeah. He was out on the field pregame warming up. Yeah. For the last game of the preseason, mm-hmm. I won't be surprised if he plays. Yeah. Yeah. The guy I play week one has him. I was hoping I know he wasn't going to have him. <laughs> it, I mean, it's still possible. And then again, even if he plays, I mean, we don't know mm-hmm. the effects of his, you know, ankle. Is he a decoy? Exactly. Yeah. So it could be. And again, it's going leading into the uh, other two players that I really like off the Giants, which is Sterling Shepard and um, I like uh, Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. Man. Talk about not liking Martellus Bennett and starting somebody else. Yeah. I like Evan Ingram. Dude. And they are looking for him. Yeah. All preseason long. It didn't matter who the quarterbacks were. Yeah. They were looking for Evan Ingram. He, yeah. You know, and I typically typically don't like um, rookie tight ends. Mm-hmm. But this dude, man, he has the potential to He's really. He's looked better than O.J. Howard. Yeah. I don't think O.J.'s got much of a chance. but No, nah, not with But Evan down. Ingram looks solid. Yeah. yeah. Already. I agree. And it's because um, nobody's paying attention to him. Well, that's Everybody's true. guarding Shepard, Odell, and Brandon Marshall. Dude, Brandon Marshall, exactly. This dude just hides in the middle and he's like, gets hey, lost. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't think he's like that. <laughs> I think his voice is probably a little deeper. Just a little bit deeper. But it was more for the yeah. comical aspect. <laughs> right, right. Um, Cowboys, you know, uh, usual suspects, other than Zeke, of course. Well, we don't know. It just depends. Yeah. But Dez, you know, I like, you know, he's one of those guys, again, you can't sit, you know, I mean, he is what he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Cole Beasley this week. Cole Beasley could eat. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like, especially PPR leagues, man. I really like Cole. I like uh, Witten. Old man uh, Witten. Old man Witten. Uh, and I like Dak. Well, let me explain. The reason why I like, not necessarily as far as I don't think Dak is going to throw for like three, 400 yards, but I like his running aspect of it. You know, Dak didn't show a lot of that last year because he didn't have to, you know, because he had mm-hmm. Z. But if you're going to, the Dak owner should really be uh, prepared to see him do some different things this year mm-hmm. because uh, those two running backs that they got right now, like three yards per carry mm-hmm. between the two of them. Behind that great offensive line, I don't like neither one of them. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, but Dak is going to help the other pieces like Dez, Cole Beasley, and stuff like it, just with his mobility. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. So I could see him, you know, punching a few in. Um, the next game we got, well, actually the last two, which is a Monday night doubleheader. Doubleheader on Monday. Man. Staying up all night on Monday. Dude. Wait a second. Tell you something. We work on Monday. Uh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so well, we'll be following on our phones. We'll be following exactly. <laughs> the Saints and the Vikings. I'm talking about narrative. Oh, oh yeah, on paper you're like, eh. Uh, narrative gets involved. Man, I'm I have come out and said that I'm not a huge mm-hmm. Adrian Peterson believer. Uh huh. But this week, man, this week I have a feeling that the Saints may feature Adrian Peterson a tad more. He may not start. But I have a feeling they're going to let him shove it in all day long or all night long. Dude, they got, for some reason I had Lana Rich in my head when you said that. Oh, no. There you go. Wow. (laughs) That just happened. But, uh, yeah, they're going to feed him, man, like a fat kid at Golden Corral. I mean. (laughs) What? That used to be me when I was a kid, though. I used to love Golden Corral. But um, you don't love it anymore. No, man. Don't, they were trying to get sponsors. You can't say that. Oh, love going. I love going to crowd. <laughs> I'm going there tonight. That's right. But yeah, I agree with you, man. AD all day. He's gonna be all day that night. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. 
all day that night. Um, yeah, it doesn't make no sense whatsoever. Anyway. <laughs> they understand. Uh, yeah, y'all get me what I'm trying to say. Breeze, of course. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to have a big game. And uh, I like Michael Thomas a lot. Yep. I, I like Michael him. Thomas all year. Yeah. On the Vikings side of it, man, the only ones that I can really say that I, I really like, which I like Diggs all year. Diggs, you know, I have a, a theory, which a lot of people agree to it, the third year mm-hmm. for wide receivers. Diggs is going to have a breakthrough this year. Well, he had uh, 80, 80 receptions last year, mm-hmm. 900 and some yards, and he was hurt a few games. Mm-hmm. So a healthy season of Diggs, you're gonna you're looking at probably 1,200 yards, maybe possibly 10 touchdowns. So, But I like him in this game in particular because the Saints hadn't really um, – they hadn't improved their – their defense, secondary yeah, their secondary all. is horrible, and the Saints are going to score points. So yeah. the Vikings are going to have to throw it to keep them. They're yeah. going to have to throw it, and yeah. of course, I like Rudolph. Yep. So the reindeer or the tight end? Uh, <laughs> tight end. Oh, okay, but they call him uh, Kyle. The was it the red red zone reindeer, something like that. Oh, oh. It's, it's pretty cool. And then the last game to top it off is the Chargers and the Broncos. Now this is where I think we differ. Um, yes, a lot. You believe in the Chargers this game. Man, I'm telling you. Well, I mean, if you look at history, and I get it. I get it. You know, the Broncos are tough. Defense, Talib, uh, you know, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. But Phillip, don't, he's like the honey badger. He don't give up. He don't care. You feel what I'm saying? He don't care. He don't care. No. Well, Keenan, I, and I get what you're saying, but history has shown these guys have um, – and of course, they hadn't went out and just blown the doors off. But I mean, Philip Rivers has has averaged at least two touchdowns a game, you know, against these guys. Yeah. So, um, if you got Rivers playing, you know, I got Keenan. I'm gonna play him that night, you know, with all uh, confidence. I mean, I just I don't know. It's not, and I'm not saying you can't play them. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you have a better option, right. If you have Keenan Allen and on your bench you got, I don't know, um, Golden Tate. Okay, okay. I'm going Golden Tate. Right, right. And that's just for on a, this game. Mm-hmm. I just, it's hard because you, you want to play, I won't call Keenan your big names, but he mm-hmm. could be if he's healthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he fell this year because of his health last year. Mm-hmm. But. It's just when you go against Denver, you got to temper your expectations so much mm-hmm. that you, you really want to walk out of week one with a W. Yeah. So yeah. I want to play the players with the most potential, and I just don't see the potential there. Not say he can't do it. Right. It's just he's got more cards stacked against him than others do. True. I, I think where it, it, it differs in, in uh, past seasons was they didn't have a stud you know, in the backfield. Now they're more balanced. I mean, you know, you got Hunter Henry, you know, you got, you know, still got Gates there, uh, Travis Benjamin. And like I said, with Melvin Gordon back there, man, I mean, they've got more weapons. So Denver's going to be busy. Mm-hmm. They can't just key on Keenan. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, to me, I think that's, that's where the difference is going to come into play, where I think he'll be successful. Uh, the Broncos. To be honest with you, man, uh, Emmanuel Sanders is the only one that I really got high hopes for on the, in this game. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling. I like Demarius. Uh, I don't like Simeon. No, <laughs> so no. that's a, it's not that it's nothing against Sanders and Demarius. I don't like Simeon. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of hard to get behind him. Uh, I do think that the Denver running game is going to produce. Mm-hmm. Which one it's going to be? I don't know if it's going to be CJ. I know Jamal's going to get a chance. Yeah. I, I don't know how close of a split that's going to be yet. Yeah. If it's 50-50 or 60-40, mm-hmm. I think combined they're going to have a huge night. Right. It's just predicting which one it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you got either one of them. Um, and you so got they're solid flex plays. Exactly. That, that, that more I, At this point, I would say Anderson's more of a flex than Jamal. Yeah. Well, I have to see something from Jamal. Yeah. I mean, okay, everybody says, oh, yeah, he looked great the last preseason game. Mm-hmm. Dude had like four carries. Yeah. Let me yeah. see him get six, eight, ten, and see how he starts to look. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. He got four carries in a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had a whole week to prep those four <laughs> carries. Let me see what he does, Yeah. you know, in the season. And mm-hmm. I have a feeling that's kind of how they're going to treat him, too. They don't want to throw him out their game one and have him have him hurt. Right. Yeah. So if, if I have to choose between two of them, I'm going CJ, at least for the first few weeks. Yeah. Well, I don't have any arguments with that, man. Mm-hmm. 
And that uh, that tops off week one. That's man. it. That's a lot of games. I can't wait, dude. My TVs are ready. Yeah, I don't got my snacks yet. Got to get my snack game yeah, on, yeah. on point. Yeah, exactly. But chicken wings will be had. Uh, there will be some some chips and some salsa. Mm-hmm. There will be all kinds of snacks. Man, whole bunch. That's right. I'm a big guy. I gotta eat, dude. Me too. That's brother. right. Well, hey, we appreciate y'all joining us. Uh, we'll be back here later on this week. Got to give you guys all the the critical information of uh, waiver wire pickups, uh, possible players to go trade for. Uh, we'll be hitting that up here in just a few days. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Uh, you know, finding us on Facebook, getting a hold of us through Gmail. Everything's posted right here on the screen. Check out our website. Uh, I'd love to hear from all you guys, and uh, we appreciate all the interaction we're getting. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. So you guys have a good uh, rest of your night, and we'll talk to you later. Peace. Peace.